All right, so I warned you guys a while ago that the PlayStation 5 Pro was going to be on its way. We talked about how I thought it was silly, that it wasn't something that was really needed. Um, but alas, the day has come. As many of you know, I'm late to the game on this one, but it's here. And so I wanted to talk about it with you guys, and I think one of the biggest points that I've been feeling in this whole thing is um, that this thing isn't really for most of us. And so I wanted to dive into that with you and explain what I mean by that, but also how I don't really know who this is fully for. So let's dive into it. So first off, I think my main point that I would like to make to people is that this PS5 isn't for you. That if you're someone who are most of the people on the internet reacting who already own a PS5, this PS5 Pro isn't for you. That Sony didn't make this, in all honesty, expecting people to upgrade from their normal PS5. That this is for people who have yet to purchase a PS5, who have maybe been holding out, and now they look at the new specs and whatever, and they're like, oh, now would be a good time to buy a PS5. I think a lot of the anger people feel is like, why would I ever upgrade from my modern or my current PS5 to this. And it doesn't feel like that big of a jump. And I think that's kind of the point is that Sony isn't looking to bring in players who are already owning a PS5 into the game with this, but they're looking to hopefully entice some people who maybe haven't bought a PS5 to maybe consider buying one now. And that's a little bit different than the PS4 Pro. I felt like the PS4 Pro was more of a step up and was something that a lot of gamers were maybe looking at investing in who already owned a PS4. That if you're someone who really wanted, especially 4K and those kinds of things, it was like, oh, and more space that you'd be like, oh, maybe I'll upgrade to this PS4 Pro. Uh, but I don't think Sony's going the same route with this PS5 Pro. I think it's more just a beefier version of it for those who have already not bought in a PS5 and so that they might be enticed. But that brings me to the big question mark I have on this whole thing. And so if this PS5 Pro isn't for people who already own a PS5, and if it's being marketed towards those who haven't purchased a PS5 to maybe buy one, um, I don't know if this is actually for them either. <laughs> and I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes in, is that they released this and announced it and it has an insane price tag of $800. That's, for one, already crazy. That if someone hasn't purchased a PS5 yet, the odds of them deciding to drop cash on one that is significantly more expensive than the base model is crazy. It wouldn't be that crazy though, if it included things that were obvious upgrades, like if the resolution was higher, which it can't be because the PS5 is already can go up to 8K and there's nothing to my knowledge that can even do or run 8K yet. Um, but maybe if the hard drive was bigger, where we actually got a bigger SSD and you got like a full terabyte and people were like, oh, I can either buy this cheaper version that only has 500 gigabytes of storage or I could get the one terabyte one and I could see people opting in to purchasing the Pro for that reason. Um, but all of those obvious things to consumers, to your average person who's purchasing something, aren't there. That there's not really a big upgrade. Um, I think it's laughable to watch the video of them showing the difference between a base PS5 and the PS5 Pro. To be honest, the difference is almost unnoticeable. Where if I were to purchase a PS5 Pro and play it, I don't think I would notice the difference of what my normal PlayStation 5 could do. And I would also like to say the amount of irony in them showing off a PS4 game in The Last of Us 2 and showing that off as the upgraded version just has me shaking my head right now and says more about the current state of PlayStation than I think anything has really said. Previously, we were like, you guys are showing us a remaster of a PS4 game that doesn't look that much better than the PS4 game. And this is supposed to be the improvement for the PS5 consoles. I just think, oh, so many things about it make me angry where it's like, this hardware, which comes back to the first video I made about this before they even announced it, that the PS5, and the reason why people are upset, I believe, is that the PS5 has yet to tap into itself. That up until this point, most of the games we've gotten from Sony have been cross-generation. That you can play it on a PS4 or a PS5, and to be honest, aside from like adaptive triggers and minor improvements, 
there's not a big graphical difference. And so to announce that you're releasing a PS5 Pro when it feels like we haven't even got a single game yet that is fully tapped into the power that the PS5 base model has just seems laughable, especially when the upgrades aren't that big. I think if they were to release this with an $800 price tag and a one terabyte SSD, that people would be like, there's not really that big of a difference in graphic capacity or resolution, but it is a bigger hard drive and people would be more okay with it. And then I think the cherry on top that has a lot of people frustrated and rightly so is that it doesn't even come with a disk drive. It doesn't even come with the vertical stand like that's laughable. That's lazy. That's pathetic. Um, I don't think this console is going to sell well. I just don't see it. Uh, I personally think that it's not something that Sony obviously invented to entice modern PS5 users into it. Um, and so you're not going to have people upgrading from their PS5 to this. But I also don't think the people they were hoping would buy into is the people who haven't already bought a PS5 are going to purchase it either because the upgrade from the base model, which wouldn't be even the disk drive version of the PS5, it would be the disk list drive version of the PS5 to the Pro is almost no difference. That to your average person, there is absolutely no reason to drop an extra couple hundred dollars to get a pro version that you can't even notice the difference on um, that doesn't come with a bigger hard drive that doesn't come with like faster speeds which wouldn't really be possible the ps5 is really fast and during a time when it feels like playstation has yet to utilize the playstation 5 hardware as it is and so those are kind of my thoughts on this again i think a great comparison to how i think this will do is the apple vision pro i don't think it's going to sell well we know that the apple vision pro uh hasn't been doing well at all it's one of apple's worst products because of the price point where people are like sure it can do cool things but it's way too much money compared to what else is out there i think you'll have a similar thing with the ps5 pro your average consumer the vast vast majority of people even the hardcore gamers are going to look at it and be like yeah there's not a big enough reason to purchase this aside from the competition including the the original ps5 itself for me to purchase it but i want to know what you guys think head down to the comment section down below let me know your thoughts do you think sony was hoping that people would upgrade from their ps5 to the pro or are you with me in thinking that this actually isn't for the majority of people who already own a ps5 that sony was never intending for us to upgrade but they were hoping to bring in new people and do you agree with me that this is probably not going to bring in any new people i can't see people rushing out to buy a pro if they haven't already bought a ps5 because the difference is almost nothing other than you're paying hundreds of more dollars for no reason let me know in the comment section down below like comment subscribe all that junk and i will see you guys in the next one